Did you know LEGO have never made a Green Goblin figure without the mask? The best we've had is this, and it's safe to say that this looks pretty dated. So today, I've tried to make one of my own using parts I had in my collection, to make some updates to figures that LEGO refused to give the time of day, and take a look into some custom options that range from $40 to $100. And answer the question, how much are you willing to spend on just one minifigure? Over the last year, with No Way Home being released, the demand for figures like this has only skyrocketed. And unfortunately, it's been left to custom companies to create them for us. In the first box here, I have what people would call a purist minifigure. Now just to explain what I have here, I have some Mysterio legs which I think are awesome. The torso is from an official Green Goblin even though I've replaced the arms. And just to emphasize the brown straps on the torso, I also gave him a brown bag. This piece is a little bit unique, I gave him a witch's skirt from the collectible minifig series but wrapped it around his neck instead of his waist. After that I have an official head from Kite Man. Now there's a plethora of heads to choose from but I think this one just works best for the actor. And again with a purist minifigure, you're just looking for official Lego prints that look like the character you're trying to create. Top that off with the purple hood and you have a purist version of the Green Goblin. Now obviously this isn't a fantastic minifigure. The prints are not accurate but it gets the message across. I know the original figure uses a light green, I just don't think that that works with today's colours on the LEGO roster. I think dark green is a much better colour. And the reason people like doing this is because it keeps everything under that 100% LEGO name. But what if you didn't care about that? What are your options? Well, and this is where you start to get into that custom territory that I was talking about before. This minifigure is from Firestar and it costs $40. As for the figure itself, you can see that it comes with a brand new hood piece. And again, this falls into that territory territory of customness that some people don't particularly like. Some people really enjoy the fact that they're limited by pieces that only LEGO create and that's perfectly fine but I think with some of these figures that are harder to create and that LEGO haven't made, I think exceptions like this, so long as they're done in the LEGO style, are perfectly acceptable in my mind. It's going to be different for everyone but showing off a figure like this, I think it needs some of these custom accessories. This figure does come with a standard LEGO hairpiece that you can place on the figure but unfortunately I don't think it looks very good, mainly because there's no purple hoodie print on the top of the figure and it feels like that part of the figure is missing unless you're using the custom hood piece. Now they could have fixed this by doing another custom hood piece but that would have increased the figure's price drastically as these custom pieces are really what makes these custom figures skyrocket. This figure is UV printed, now it's not the same technology that LEGO used to print their own figures and the only difference really between the two is that UV printing has a slightly raised texture than regular pad printing, meaning if you're going to put this next to a standard LEGO minifigure it's probably going to look great from an untrained eye but if you do know that it's UV printed you will be able to tell. As for the detailing of this figure it's frankly phenomenal I think the designer has done a fantastic job on this particular figure especially with the side leg printing and the arm printing again it's just a shame that they're using UV printing as if this was a pad printed minifigure I think it could be one of the best custom minifigures on the market and that leads me swiftly on to this parcel here but before that I want to talk a little bit about today's sponsor Fetch Rewards. Fetch Rewards is a super simple app that allows you to collect points on literally any purchase that you make. Simply scan any physical receipt or e-receipt into the app and you will start earning points on those purchases. All you have to be doing is saving those receipts. Even if you have receipts up to two weeks old, they'll still let you redeem it. Not only that, they have an e-receipt button that you can press directly on the app in case you order all your parcels from Amazon. And then once you've earned enough points on your app, you can redeem these points for real gift cards from Amazon, Starbucks, even GameStop and Walmart. Fetch Rewards is 100% free, so there's no better time to get started using it now, as everybody's going to have a bunch of receipts from Christmas. And if you go to the link in the description and use my code BRICKS and scan in your first receipt, you'll get an extra 5,000 points on top of your normal points that you'd normally get. Thanks so much to Fetch Rewards for sponsoring this video. Let's get back into it. For starters, this is a minifigure by Jack a Brick. It's a fantastic minifigure. It comes in a fairly standard Ziploc bag and then another bag full of accessories. Something Jacka also liked to do is include two stickers and a little metal card that displays the figure and what number you got out of the batch. I got number 15. But taking a look at the minifigure itself, it is Phenomenal. This minifigure is pad printed, which means it's done in the exact same technology that LEGO used themselves. Again, it does fall into that heavy custom territory that not a lot of people like. For starters, you can see that this minifigure is not a standard LEGO color. It's done in a shiny green color. And this minifigure also goes the extra mile with side torso printing. And again, could be one of those things that throws off a purist LEGO fan. 
Another thing that may throw off purist LEGO fans is the amount of custom pieces that are on this minifigure. This minifigure has a custom hair piece. And moving down to the arms, you can see we've got two different arm accessories. They're molded and feel really sturdy considering how small they are. As for the accessories, he comes with another hood piece which I feel works really well with the goggles print that he's got on one of his faces. He comes with another head. Just giving more face prints for a minifigure like this increases customization and is a fantastic option. And he also comes with a custom mold pumpkin bomb that's much smaller than say the Firestar one that uses an official Lego piece. As for the printing on this guy, he is so detailed to the point where I feel some people may say he is too detailed to look like a Lego minifigure, but if you ask me, it just reaches that line of collectible minifigure standards, which means if you did remove all of the accessories off of this figure, I think you could trick people into saying that this was a CMF. Now don't get me wrong, a fantastic looking minifigure is always what we strive for, but knowing I can't get another one of these and there's absolutely no way of replacing a part, it means I handle this minifigure with such care that it almost becomes not fun to have. But for those who are planning on displaying it with sets, I think this is a fantastic option and should 100% consider buying figures like this. If you're serious about collecting Lego or have a model in your home that a custom minifigure like this would really elevate the production value of. For me, that should be the Statue of Liberty. Now, what do I think is best? Obviously, these $100 figures are going to be fantastic if you're planning on displaying something and you also want minifigures to have as much wow factor as the set itself. Custom minifigures always work best if they're a minifigure that we've never had before and are much more likely to buy a custom minifigure that isn't already a figure on the market or one that's extremely difficult to get hold of. Even though they are really expensive, I'm gonna start including more custom minifigures in builds that I do here on this channel and you should let me know what you think about custom minifigures and give me your honest feedback. As I talk to a lot of these companies, I think they would like to know your feedback on custom minifigures below. And not only that, I can't wait to start including custom minifigures on videos like this that you guys should definitely check out. 